Welcome to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds for Plymouth County. This show is about Plymouth County real estate. We'll be talking about the recordings in October. This is a November show. But we talk about the recordings in the month of October for Plymouth County. Uh, we have a great show today. We have Steve Donahue of Donahue Associates in the second segment talking about commercial real estate activity in Plymouth County and a little bit of our Plymouth County history in the third segment. So let's go right to the numbers. As far as deeds that were recorded for the month of October, there were 971 deeds recorded in October, more than the 880 in September, down 1% from the 985 recorded last October. So for about 10 months into the calendar year, we're about even with last year. And that's despite rising interest rates. Uh, the next image you're gonna see is of mortgages. Now mortgages are for people that are buying real estate and using mortgages to purchase the real estate or when people refinance Refinances are down significantly since the rates went up. However, there were 1,734 mortgages recorded in October, more than the 1,542 in September. However, down 13% compared to the 1989 in October of last year. So for 10 months of the calendar year, we're down 8%, again, mostly attributable to the higher interest rates with people that don't want to refinance because they're at pretty good rates for what is offered now. The next image you're going to see is foreclosure deeds. Foreclosure deed is when someone has lost their property to the lender. Clearly, it's been an issue over the last 10 years. However, it's significantly um, lower there were 57 foreclosure deeds across Plymouth County in October this year, more than the 44 in September, 50% higher than last October. However, through the first 10 months of calendar year 18, 14% lower than last year, and that's a sign of the times. The next image you're gonna see is a foreclosure notice. A foreclosure notice is when a lender is um, getting close to taking back your property. The, the first document we see at the registry that shows someone's in trouble, there are 82 foreclosure notices in October, up from the 74 in September, 11% more than last October. Many lenders are getting caught up um, with people, so if you're in trouble, reach out to a federal housing counselor the next image you're going to see is all the foreclosures and orders of notice throughout the 27 communities of Plymouth County. A couple stories, quick stories. We're now re recording in land court so people can record their land court documents over the internet. We just opened our new Brockton satellite at 32 Belmont. Our training room, a free opportunity to search our records online efficiently will be held in Plymouth, Thursday, December 6th at nine o'clock. Look for the property fraud alert on our website. And uh, you have a great guest in the next segment, Steve Donahue of Donahue Associates, who will be discussing commercial real estate in Plymouth County. So we'll see you next segment. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. And to follow the swimming rules. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules, now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. Welcome back to the Registers Report. Again, my name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. In this segment of the show, we always try to do something educational in nature. We haven't talked about commercial real estate 
in Plymouth County for quite some time, but I have a great guest on the show, Steve Donahue of Donahue Associates, who's been in the business for quite a while and had, will have some great perspectives as to what's going on in the Plymouth County commercial real estate market. So thanks, Steve. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Always good to see you. I great. caught you uh, at the West Side Pizza about a week and, ago. And, and the Italian kitchen. In the Italian <laughs> kitchen all the time. So uh, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and how you got into commercial real estate. I've been doing this for about 30, 35 years. I'm a graduate of Brockton High School in Mass Maritime. My dad, when I was young, worked in the Boston Naval Shipyard, and then he got into real estate working with the William Beers Agency, and he started selling uh, residential with Bill, and eventually opened his own office uh, selling residential real estate, and eventually my older brother Mark and myself joined him, and uh, Mark started the commercial division, which uh, was great because it's less evenings and weekends for me, so I uh, was happy to shift over to commercial real estate at the time. Well, Mark's been a guest on the show before, and everyone who's been around for a while remembers Henry. Yeah, he was a great he's guy. He's been around a for a guy. long time. Yeah. yeah. So um, let's talk a little bit about your market area, what you cover. We're very strong on the South Shore. We go from uh, Boston to uh, Providence. Depends on the product, how big it is. A uh, bigger product, we can take a bigger ring and it's worth investing your time and energy into bigger properties farther away. But smaller properties tend to stay closer to home because you really can't service those smaller properties far away. Big properties are marketed differently than small ones. Small ones require a lot of local knowledge and care. In your uh, offices on Route 123 Belmont Street in Brockton? Yeah, we're at 457 Belmont Street in Brockton. We've been on Belmont Street since my dad started. We moved uh, from Lower Belmont to Upper Belmont about uh, 15 years ago. It's a beautiful building. Thank you, yes. Yeah. It's modeled after one of the Richardson train stations. Great. Yes. So why don't you share your contact information while we're talking about it? Sure. Steve Donahue, Donahue Associates, uh, 508. 588-1717, or you can email me, sd at donahueassociates.com. So let's talk about where the commercial real estate market has been over the past year, from your perspective. Commercial real estate market has been hot, and it's been hot for a long time. It's been a great market. The market was great from 95 to 2005, been an unprecedented great uprun. Then 2006, it slowed down to about 2012, so maybe six years. Different people argue on when the up and down turn cycles start. It takes a while to realize you're really in a true 10, not an anomaly. So, And the market's been very good for the last six years, so um, we might be nearing the end of a cycle. Interest rates are up. Mm -hmm. uh, demand is still very strong, especially for commercial, because it's more limited than residential in scope and number of buildings for sale. So. Uh, it's still a very strong market. It could uh, level off or it could slow down. Boston and North has been red hot, uh, nothing around. We're catching up with them as far as having very low to no inventory in certain areas. So the market is still red hot because there's still pent up demand. So I think even if residential slows, which I believe it is slowing mm -hmm. down right now, that uh, commercial will probably continue uh, for a little while longer because of that pent up backup in demand. Yeah, we actually saw residential slow down more in September. It picked up a little bit in October, but I think everyone considers that that's just the beginning of a slight decrease. Well, the rates ticking up doesn't help. And right. eventually a market, uh, they're in, in, when it's in demand, people looking for things, eventually it, it reaches uh, a a neutral point or it becomes satisfied. So I think a lot of the residential people have become satisfied. People who are looking have, have already bought. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a, it's a cyclical, natural slowdown. It could be a product of the economy, but it was uh, kind of coming anyways, I think, because uh, the cycle had lasted 12 years. Mm -hmm. So it's still a decent market. It's now as good a time as any. It could slow down. It could go level. That's the uh, crystal ball that I don't have. So back to commercial, anyone that drives around Plymouth County sees a lot of signs, Donahue Associates. 
Yeah, we've had a lot of properties over a lot of years. A lot of them are buildings for lease. Mm -hmm. uh, some are for sale. It's very hard to find buildings 10,000 square feet and up for sale. 10 to 50,000 or even more are very much desirable. Land at good intersections or close to the highway or industrially zoned is also in demand. Uh, retail has been doing well in certain segments. The big box retailers, a lot of them are going out with Amazon and people buying online. But uh, it's uh, the marketplace is shifting, but it's still very strong. I think you know we're more of a service industry area now, especially the Boston area, because we have so many uh, people who are educated in technology and marketing fields and businesses. So how do most of your clients come to you? A lot of them come uh, from previous exposure and relationships. A lot of them come from uh, the internet or they just see the number of signs that we have. Uh, signs are great uh, information for people because right away they know what they're calling on where, and where it is. They mm -hmm. might not be the exact building or use that they want, but at least they know that someone is in the area. So. Uh, the signs are great, and the internet has certainly taken over with make signs less important, but still, I feel signs are very important for your local presence. So what are the primary attributes that somebody would come looking for when they come south of Boston to look at real, real estate? Well, primarily, uh, people come south of Boston because of sometimes cost, sometimes convenience, because once you come south of Boston, you're not stuck in the... Uh, 128 traffic, and it's very difficult to get in and out of Boston. Traffic's so horrible everywhere. <laughs> it's horrible everywhere, but at least, you know, the 490, now, years ago people wanted to be in one, inside of 128. Now people are happy to be inside of 495. I think 495 is one of the greatest roads going. You can get to 2495, 495, it gets you everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's great. The Taunton Industrial Park has done a tremendous, it's great boon to the area. So um, I think it hasn't quite reach down to uh, very southern Mass, the Fall River, New Bedford area, isn't quite uh, as in demand as it has been in the uh, Brockton. It kind of tapers off after we get, say, Lakeville area beyond south, kind of tapers. There isn't as much demand or as much commercial property down there historically. So uh, we're still a Boston Fed market. Taunton is great because it's great for companies who do business in Providence and Boston because it's halfway in between. Sure. A lot of business executives typically lived in Mansfield because they could get to either Boston or Providence or take the train and get where they needed to go, whether it's north or south. Yeah, interesting, yeah. So, so when, when a um, potential listing comes to you, um, any particular advice you give them to get their property ready to list? Yeah, we always tell them, you know, to put your best foot forward if it needs paint or cleaning or cleaning out. Um, if you have, have a building full of items or over furnished, it makes it look smaller, crowded, and not as in a good a condition as it might be. A lot of times people touring through buildings will tend to look at the objects or the contents or ask questions about those things. So I prefer to have a building that's very clean or vacant because mm -hmm. then they concentrate on the space, which is what we're trying to sell or lease. And if somebody were to come to you as a potential buyer, yeah. um, anything, any advice you'd give to them to start off? Uh, tell them to be patient and uh, be somewhat flexible because the market is so tight, it's very hard to get where you want, when you want, the size you want, the location you want, the amount of land. Once you meet down, sit with somebody and meet with them and write out their criteria list, all of a sudden when you think you have 10 properties, it shrinks down to two or none. Mm -hmm. So uh, it requires flexibility on the part of the buyer in buying something. It's better if they have uh, some vision. It's good when they have an idea. I tell people, you know, buy something a little, a little bigger, especially if you're growing, because uh, you don't want to do this again too quickly. Mm -hmm. It's a consuming uh, experience. It costs money and time to buy a new building. So you don't want to uh, short cheat move. yourself. The move. the move cost to move <laughs> is expensive. So there are a lot of there are a lot of factors. But you know, mm. a lot of people call us because they've simply outgrown what they've been in, or they have two or three locations and they'd like to consolidate. And um, you know that that's that's great. It's harder to do in an up market, but 
then again, it's less, less likely to happen in the down market. Yeah. So it's, uh, some people get caught betwixt and between the market. Well, we've had a lot of residential realtors in here, as I told you yeah. before, and they were, have been experiencing or were experiencing a lot of bidding wars, people buying over asking value. If it, has the commercial real estate market faced those challenges? In some instances, yes. Buildings that are high, highly desirable might have multiple bidders or people will pay a little bit over or at a building for sale in Avon for several years and the uh, had several buyers and the owner would never sell even though some of the offers were at, at or near full price. And then finally last year, um, we had interest from multiple parties and uh, it ended up going for over asking price even though the building did need some work. So it's a function of uh, the buyers not being able to find ex exactly what they want, exactly what they want, or in the condition they want, they can't be that choosy when there's only uh, two items on the shelf. If you don't pick one, then you're picking nothing. Right, right. No, I, I think it's a fascinating field. Yeah, it goes up and down. Right now, it's up, and uh, hopefully, it'll go flat or dip slightly. Or um, some more product coming back into the marketplace w would be good for all of us and the economy. So, but uh, the economy is going to go where it wants to. How long does it take to close a particular sale once you've gotten a lead on property? It depends on, on the buyer, the bank, and the property. If the property has any issues, like environmental issues, uh, sometimes slow a property sale down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But a normal commercial transaction, I think uh, 60 days is very quick, uh, 90 days is normal and 120 to 180 is, is not unexpected. Uh, there are a lot of hoops to jump through. Um, financing is not always easy. Uh, commercial is a much more complicated process than residential as far as timing and what's demanded of the buyer and the seller. So um, we, at the registry, love it when there's a big commercial sale because it brings a big excise <laughs> yes. tax into the registry as income. Yep. We saw something last week. They sold a property over in um, Route 18 in Abington. It was a huge housing project, oh, you know, like yeah. a $50 million sale. Now, we don't well, see as many of those down here as they do, for example, in Suffolk County, as you can right. imagine. Yeah, those, those are great sales, and um, tax man gets his day every once in a while, right. and we get some money in the state coffers to help provide uh, the great programs that we have available. Right, right. Got to put money back into to the infrastructure and the system so that we can help other people to do what we've done in the past. Sure. So why don't you break out your crystal ball and let's talk about uh, where we think we're going to be a year from now and maybe two years from now. I think uh, a year or two from today, we're going to be uh, possibly lovely to, level to slightly dipping, but I think commercial is still going to be hot for another year just because of the back pent up demand. So I think even though it might be slowing down, we just don't have enough product for the number of people who want it at this time. So that means it's going to take a while to, to for those buyers to exhaust themselves or be fulfilled mm -hmm. in the marketplace. Now, um, getting back to an issue that we talk about a lot, some of these old manufacturing facilities, when, when the industry has changed and they'll kind of left behind. Are those more complicated sales? Usually, uh, if we're talking about like older buildings, or yeah. people call them mill buildings quite right. often, which are very popular in Boston, uh, they haven't been as popular in, for the south you get from Boston, outside of Boston, but uh, those buildings present certain challenges for, as far as construction, engineering, uh, retrofitting, parking. So a lot of them suffer from uh, problems of an, of an older building. Some of them do make great conversions for residentials, for condos or lofts or office buildings, but as far as um, modern warehousing or research and development facilities, they're not really appropriate because of the low stud and the multiple floors and wood or the construction or the loading. They just, they were built in a different area, mm -hmm. era for a different, for a different purpose. So um, they don't quite meet the criteria like Amazon is building these huge facilities that cover several acres and they're 40 feet tall and a lot of these building, older buildings are 8 to 10 feet tall inside which mm -hmm. um, 
it's difficult. People nowadays want uh, high stud space if they need it, and they, they rack or convey a belt system. So they're doing business in a different way now than they used to. So those buildings are more suited to office or residential conversions most times. Yeah, though we have seen throughout Plymouth County some buildings even at, like a block away from here, the old uh, night shoe building the, yeah. where they did a lot of sports sporting goods yeah. turned into um, apartments. apartments and yeah. seemed to fill up and people seemed to enjoy them. Yep, it's a great project for downtown. It helps create revitalization downtown and a new urban right. center. I mean, Brockton is going, trying to go through what Quincy went through quite right. a few years ago. So as uh, prosperity has moved south, the rings of Boston have gotten bigger, so that uh, Brockton is becoming, uh, in a way, the next Quincy. So we're continuing to, to grow and improve, and uh, Brockton has been a major city since, since before the Civil War. Manufacturing was originally North Bridgewater, and we right. had the... Uh, all the tracks and yeah, uh, ammunition. Speaking of tracks, a lot of communities that have buildings along the railroad stations, the community rail stations, yeah. seem to be doing pretty well. Yeah, Brockton's a very interesting and historic place. And uh, Brockton was the first city in the modern world to have electricity. We have the Thomas Edison building where mm -hmm. the old colony planning council sure. is housed. And uh, Brockton was the first city to have electricity. And Brockton was also the first modern city in the US to have sewer. Mm -hmm. uh, so Brockton was the leader in, in many ways. It had a, they had a trolley train or, that went from Campello to Montello. It was free. You could jump on and off and go from one end of the city. They always had train service into Boston. And uh, one time, people rather come to Brockton for nightlife than Boston. Right. Yeah. So, so um, just last question because we get a signal to kind of wrap it up. Sure. Future of malls. Malls? Um, I read recently in the Enterprise like that Macy's moved out and now we've got uh, a fitness gym and a small and retail over yep, there, right? and Burlington Coat Factory. So I think uh, I read in the paper that the malls are now looking for more service or, or food or product industry. So they're shifting to things that people cannot f do or find online. So uh, a lot of the big boxes are hurt by the major online retailers and they're having to shift, shift their focus. I believe many of them are going to offer most of their products and services online, uh, just like the other folks. So if uh, the arena becomes online, you have to jump in and compete online. In the end of them, all I know is looking to add some housing components to that. Yeah, that's always interesting. It, it's well located, it's near the highway, right. it's a desirable town. So. Uh, if, if nothing else, these, a lot of these malls are well located and have a lot of utilities, yes. infrastructures, and services available. So they do make uh, uh, good places for additional housing units. Apartments have become uh, more desirable and in vogue and wanted than ever before. I've never seen uh, so many high-end apartment complexes go up in the entire region. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, why don't you... Share your contact information one more time. Sure. Uh, my name is Steve Donahue, Donahue Associates. We're located at 457 Belmont Street in Brockton, across from the fairgrounds. My office phone is 508-588-1717. And you can email me, sd at donahueassociates.com. That's D-O-N-A-H-U-E. Well, thank you again for coming on the Thanks show. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. A lot of information. There is, and it's moving around fast. Right, right. Thanks, Steve. Take care. So welcome back to the Registers Report. In this uh, third segment, we do talk a little bit about Plymouth County history. I want to thank Steve Donahue for the great job he did talking about commercial real estate activity in Plymouth County. It's a great company, uh, and I, you see their signs all over the place. So I'm sure it was great to see one of them face to face. In this segment of the show, uh, we talk about the holidays for the month of November. November 4th was daylight saving time ending, setting the clocks back an hour. The 6th of November was Election Day. The 11th was Veterans Day. Coming up on the 22nd is Thanksgiving. In this particular show, we're going to talk about some of our Plymouth County history. First of all, Mickey Cochran. We saw some great baseball played 
uh, earlier this month. The Red Sox did it again. However, we don't know who from that group will make it to the Hall of Fame. One of Plymouth County's own is a member of the Baseball Hall of Fame. Mickey Cochran, born in Bridgewater, went to Boston University where he led it in five sports, baseball, football, basketball, hockey, and boxing. And he's known as the greatest catcher of his era. He played and managed for 13 years with the Philadelphia Athletics and the Detroit Tigers, winning five pennants, three World Series, and two American League Most Valuable Player Awards. He was known as a fiery competitor, close friend of Ty Cobb. Anyone knows that era, how they were in terms of their competitiveness. His career ended suddenly in 1939 when he was hit by a pitch, knocked unconscious with a fractured skull. He never batted again. He was elected to Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown in 1947, making him the only Plymouth County native to be elected to Cooperstown. There's a plaque in his honor at the youth baseball fields on Bedford Street, Route 18, in his hometown of Bridgewater. So the next notable record we're going to talk about is Hastings Keith. So another election has come and gone, and Hastings Keith remains the last congressman elected from Plymouth County. He was a congressman uh, from 1958 to 1972. He was a leader in the establishment of the Cape Cod National Seashore and known as the Cranberry Congressman. He and his wife had purchased his Bridgewater property in 1951. He donated the Riverside portion of his property to the town in 1973, added to the War Memorial Park. He began his political career in Massachusetts um, in 1958, and he served all the way from Brockton to Cape and Islands. His private most proud achievement was the Cape Cod National she Seashore. In 1959, there was a rumor spread that cranberries were causing cancer. He had some major studies done, which proved that not to be true. And the cranberry industry is still one of our biggest agricultural industries in Massachusetts today. There's a federal building named after him in New Bedford. And, um, Certainly part of Plymouth County history. Last but not least, as we come to Thanksgiving, John Alden. John Alden was the cooper uh, for the Mayflower. He moved from Plymouth to Duxbury. That home is still recognized. It was in the second divisions of the land that that land was established. And um, his home now is the museum. Um, it is acquired by the Aldred Kindred of America, who run a public museum. Certainly one of the most uh, well-known pilgrims, based upon a poem by Henry Wadworth Longfellow, The Courtship of Miles Standish. So I want to thank Mike Simmons, Lorna Green Baker, and Christine Richards from our office in putting this show together today. We share this uh, show across Plymouth County. We put it in CDs and put them out there to the various cable access programs. We like to share with people information about their real estate. We thank the local access providers for running this show on their cable stations. And we'll see you next month. Have a great Thanksgiving, everybody.